Good Erev Yantiv, good, Erev, good close to Erev Shabbos. It is with a great sense of joy and, to be honest, a little trepidation that uh, we are pleased that Be'ezrat Hashem this coming week we will be able to begin the uh, opening of our shul and to start the process tiptoeing back to as much of normalcy as possible. Um, this, uh, of course, is uh, Shavuos. And uh, the Chazal tell us a fascinating statement. Whoever rejoices with a chasan and kala will merit the five voices, the five kolos, the five sounds that were, uh, uh, that were present at Har Sinai. Pasuk says uh, there was kol shofar, kol shofar, kolos ubrakim, kol alokim. But conversely, if an individual does not rejoice with a chasen and kala, then they will fail and they will forfeit the other five kolos, kol sason v'kol simcha, kol chasan v'kol kala, kol hodu, the sounds of joy and gladness of bride and groom and the sounds of gratitude and thankfulness. Now, the meaning of this particular medrash aside, clearly the medrash is a drawing a symmetry between the five sounds, the five kolos at Har Sinai, and the five sounds, the five kolos that are recorded in the Navi associated with chasan and kala, kol sason, kol simcha, kol chasan and kol kala, etc. Now, if we look at this symmetry, what we'll find is something fascinating. The voice of Hashem, the last of the five kolos at Har Sinai, corresponds to kol hodu, the sounds of thankfulness and gratitude. And similarly, the two kol shofars in the middle rep- are correspond to the sound of, of chasan and kala. And that also seems to uh, make some intuitive sense. Each one is their own shofar. Each one, the chasan and kala, is their own strong blast, kol shofar, chazak, olech. But together, they build something unique. But the first of these sounds, the kolos, that it says regarding Harsinai, the sounds, kolos uvrakim, the sounds of thunder. That's not exactly clear what precise sound is uh, being uh, is being referenced here. But if we correspond it to the, to the symmetrical first two kolos in uh, Chasem Bekala, we get to kol sason v'kol simcha. So if, in fact, this is a, a good symmetry, the two first kolos of Har Sinai correspond to the kol sason v'kol simcha. So what is sason and simcha that is relevant to Har Sinai? Sason means gladness and simcha means joy. So perhaps one can look at the, uh, at the root, the cognate of each of these words. The word simcha, says Rav Hirsch, is connected to the root word tzemach, sameach, simcha, tzameach, simcha. And the word tzemach, says Rav Hirsch, means like a flower, a flower which produces uh, beautiful petals and beauty and a scent. Simcha corresponds to tzemach. The other word, sason, corresponds, the word sas corresponds to the word tzitz. This means like a bud, a bud which, is, uh, which ultimately grows in, uh, into becoming a fruit on the tree. So simcha corresponds to the flower, and sason corresponds to the bud. Two different types of joy, two different types of happiness. The happiness of simcha is a flower. A flower is beautiful. It has a beautiful scent. It looks wonderful. It is an intense experience, but it is short-lived. And the flowers of the, pe- the petals of the flower indeed fall, and they give way to the plant, to the tree, to whatever uh, the, uh, the vegetative state is. Sason, however, is much more enduring. Sason is much more powerful. It is not quite as intense. It is not quite as beautiful in a certain sense. Its aesthetic is not quite the same as the flower. The joy, the pleasure, is a little bit more muted, but it is more enduring because the bud lasts longer and ultimately develops into the fruit. That's Sason and Simcha. 
These are two different types of joy, and they correspond to two different types of our relationship with the Torah itself. Rav Schwab points out that in Pirkei Avos, we say that a person, there are four different types of people who go to a base medrash, or don't go to a base medrash, to go to study Torah. A holech va'oseh, one who goes and does, one who goes to the base medrash and studies, one who's holech ve'eno oseh, one who is eno holech ve'eno oseh, all across the spectrum, from one who goes and does to one who doesn't go and doesn't do. What, is this, uh, uh, what does this uh, teaching of Pirkei Avos mean? It says Rabbi Schwab, the one who is holech is one who goes to study, but he, he enjoys the benefit, the pleasure, the enjoyment, uh, and, the, uh, and the advantage of uh, being edified by the wisdom of the rabbis, the wisdom of the Talmidei Chachamim. That's the holech. And if somebody does that, that's a good thing. But it's not the ideal. There's holech ve'ose. Ose means one not just that one who does the Torah. In this context, it means one who toils in the study of Torah. One who actually engages actively in the process. He's an ose. He's yagea. He uh, is yagia, a person who toils and labors. And that is really the ideal to both be a holech, one who is able to learn in the company of wise people, talmidei chachamim, and benefit from their wisdom, not to be a person in a silo, stuck in their own place, in their own Dalit Amos, but also to toil independently and work hard at it. Holech ve'ose. And this is the ideal. And I think that these two uh, uh, aspects of Talmud Torah also reflect the two aspects of joy. Because just as, uh, as simcha is beautiful, intense, but somewhat fleeting, so too the whole person can go and can hear and hear a shir and listen to a lecture, maybe even read a book. But it doesn't quite have, it might not have, the long-lasting, uh, the staying uh, capability as sasom. Sasom, which is an enduring joy. Somebody who toils in the Torah is going to be an enduring experience. We all know that when we invest in something, it stays with us much longer than if we just hear it, see it, uh, and, uh, and encounter it. That is sason v'simcha and holech and uh, ose. On Shavuos, we celebrate the, uh, uh, the Kabbalah Satora, accepting the Torah, and Matan Torah, which is the giving of the Torah. Or those are two sides of the same coin. But actually, they are two separate ideas. Matan Torah is being the recipient of God's uh, good graces and God's gift. Kabbalah Satora is what we do to actively incorporate the Torah into our lives. So the joy and gladness, there's one which is fleeting and beautiful also, but there's one which is more enduring, a little bit more muted, but much more enduring. Talmud Torah, there is uh, the joy and pleasure of listening to somebody else and benefiting from somebody else, and that's great. But, ultim and, uh, but ultimately, uh, what is really enduring is when we put the toil and investment in ourselves. On Shavuos, we have Matan Torah, which is God giving us the Torah, and Kabbalah Satora our active acceptance of the Torah. Tonight we begin Shavuos. And even though we in our shul are still uh, going to be separated from one, from one another, we can still in be holech ve'ose. We can read all the books and articles. We, we sent out shiurim for people to download. But also, there is self-guided study for us to toil. Toil a little bit in our homes. We Whatever we read tonight, we may or may not remember. But I'm sure that whatever we toil in tonight, with ourselves, or if we're blessed to have a spouse or family with us, learn active, maybe create an active learning experience. And in doing so, I, I, am, I assure us all that we will have not only simcha, but we will have sasa. It will be a joyous experience. It will be pleasurable, but it will also be enduring. It will be a time of matan Torah, but it will also be Kabbalah Satara. It will be something that we will remember tomorrow, and hopefully something that will endure and will remember and impact us for years to come. Good Shabbos.
Good Yantif, Chag Sameach, we look forward to seeing you soon.